Hey, I'm Kyle from The Distilled Man, and up next, I'm going to share six different ways to politely end a conversation at a party. Stick around. Have you ever been at a party, a get-together, or a function? You're talking to someone for a while, and everything's going fine, but then after a while, you start to feel, well, a little bit trapped. You know, it could be that you're talking to someone who really likes the sound of their own voice and just kind of won't stop jabbering. Or maybe you're trapped talking to someone who's an insurance salesman or a, a real estate agent and they want to talk shop, but you just want to have fun. Or it could be that, you know, maybe the conversation has just run its course and, you know, it's time to go your separate ways, but neither of you has made the first move yet. So you want to get out of the conversation, but you, you don't want to be rude. Up next, I'm going to share six different ways to politely get out of a conversation. We'll cover the minimalist, the mingle, the top off, the duty calls, the bookend, and the special delivery. Number one, the minimalist. Now, some people like the more direct approach to getting out of a conversation, kind of treating it like ripping off a Band-Aid. So with this approach, you simply wait for a pause in the conversation. And this could be helped by, you know, a momentary distraction, like one of you's been offered, hors d'oeuvres or a drink. Or you can just simply wait for them to take a breath, because even if they're yammering on, they're gonna to have to breathe at some point, or maybe they take a sip of their drink. And then you swiftly do two things. First, you smile as genuinely and warmly as possible, and then you say, well, it was really nice talking to you, and then you walk off. Now, this approach can work fine, and technically it's perfectly polite, but sometimes if you don't do it quite right, it can come across as a little bit abrupt. So some of these upcoming techniques may be a little bit better for you. Number two, the mingle. Now with this approach, you're essentially gonna tell them that you're gonna go socialize with some other people at the party. So you might say something like, oh, it was great talking to you. Now I'm going to go catch up with some other friends. Or, wow, it was so nice chatting with you. Um, now if you'll excuse me, I just saw an old friend I need to catch up with. And whether it's a cocktail party or whether it's a networking event, the goal, is for you, uh, the goal of the event is for you to talk to more than one person. So it's perfectly acceptable for you to say that you're going to go socialize with someone else. And you can even kind of have fun with it and make fun of the fact that you're, you're, you're sort of a glad-handing schmooze. Like, well, if you'll excuse me, I think I'm going to go do a bit more mingling. And at a business event, in some ways, it's almost easier to use this technique. You can say something like, wow, I've taken up a lot of your time. We're here to meet people. Why don't, why don't we split up and uh, go make the rounds? Number three, the top off. It's funny, even if you don't drink alcohol, at a social gathering, people seem to universally accept that having a glass in your hand or a bottle of something, even water, uh, is kind of like a prop. And of course, if it does have alcohol in it, it can kind of help loosen you up that way as well. But even if not, just having anything, even like a water bottle, is a little bit of a security blanket in a social gathering. And because people understand that your drink is a prop at a party, the funny phenomenon happens. People recognize that an empty glass is a situation that needs to be fixed. And this is why the top off is such a good technique. All you have to do is say, oh, look at that, I've, I've run dry, I better go top off my drink. Or, oh, it was lovely speaking with you. Um, I think I'm gonna go refresh my drink now. And one sort of sneaky trick I heard about is, the, is always keep your drink only half full. And that way it's a lot easier to use the top off technique whenever you need it. Oh, look at that. Excuse me for a second. Number four, the duty calls. Now with this one, there's kind of the sky's the limit in terms of how you can use this because all you're doing is essentially excusing yourself from the conversation because, well, duty calls. There's something that you need to do and that thing needs to be done right now. So you could just say something like, oh, well, if you'll excuse me, I've got to go fill in the blank. It was great talking to you. What's interesting about this is that studies have shown that simply having any reason for doing something can often make the other person more understanding and less likely to you know, have their feathers ruffled. So it almost doesn't matter what you say in that fill in the blank space. You could say something like, well, if you'll excuse me, I really need to go comb my mustache. It was nice meeting you. Now, the, this technique can also work very well if you're the host or if you're helping the host. Because you can say something like, oh, it was so nice catching up with you. Well, if you'll excuse me, uh, I told Kara I would help her with the, set up the dessert table. Of course, you might have already guessed that the duty calls technique does have a double meaning. We all know that the easiest way to get out of a conversation is just to tell someone that you have to go to the restroom. Duty calls. Duty. Get it? Okay. Number five, the bookend. Now the bookend is probably one of the more civilized ways to end a conversation. Because what you're doing is you're sort of thematically winding down the conversation by referring back to a, 
uh, something that you were talking about originally or a key point that the other person made. This especially works great if the other person has given you a tip or some advice. You could say something like, wow, I really enjoyed talking to you and thanks so much for that tip about the, uh, the, the lawn fertilizer. I'm definitely gonna have to give that a try in my backyard. Or, well, those were some amazing adventures you had in Thailand. Thanks so much for sharing. My wife and I are definitely gonna have to check that out for our next vacation. What's nice about this approach is that, you know, two things. One is that it gives a very clear sign that you're winding the conversation down. And two, it kind of gives the other person a nice warm fuzzy because it, you know, it shows that you were listening and it kind of, kind of validates their experience. Number six, the special delivery. Now this technique is a little bit more advanced because it requires a little bit of logistical finesse. And I, I heard this tip from my friend Rosalinda Randall, an etiquette consultant here in, in the Bay Area. And with the special delivery, you're essentially bringing the person you're talking to over to another group of people. Hey, why don't we go say hello to those folks over there? I have someone I, I want to introduce you to. And then you physically take the other person over there. You walk over there and you say, hey, Sam, meet so-and-so. So-and-so, meet Sam. And immediately they start talking. And when they get into conversation, that gives you an opportunity to quietly slip away and excuse yourself. And all you really have to say is, oh, excuse me for a moment. Or, oh, I'll let you guys, uh, let you chat for a minute and just extract yourself. And the nice thing about this technique is if it's done well, uh, rather than the person feeling rejected or like you no longer want to talk to them, instead, they just get the benefit of having a new person who, who can listen to them. So the next time you're at a party or a get together and you need a polite way to get out of a conversation, just remember these six tips. So guys, you may have other tips on how to get out of, get out of conversations politely, so please leave your comments below. I always love hearing from you. And thanks again for watching, and I will see you soon. Thank you.